Live 5 investigation reveals there's a shortage of nurses and doctors here in our state who are specifically trained to do exams for evidence on people who have been sexually assaulted. And as Caitlin Stansel tells us, this has some advocates worried that rapists are going unpunished because survivors don't have access to the care they need to pursue justice. Two women painfully connected through a confession spelled out in less than 200 words on a single page. The salutation simply, Dear Jane. I mean, I contacted the police officer who was involved in her case and wrote her a letter anonymously. And she I wrote, I want to say that I'm so sorry this happened to you. I didn't have to and it's not your fault. You're not alone. The words were penned more than a decade after the writer says she was raped by a family friend. She was intent on making sure there would be a different outcome for Jane. They dropped the charges in my case, mm -hmm. so that's all I could think of was going to happen with her. I remember wondering what was going to happen and why this was happening, and I asked, I said, I just want to leave, and he proceeded to just completely pull my pants straight off of my body, and I thought I was going to die. Jane knew the trauma would not end after she called 911. She was once a forensic examiner nurse herself, specifically trained to perform sexual assault exams on rape victims. I knew at that moment that I did not want him to get away with this. And I can say for me, having that experience and that knowledge prior, definitely I had no qualms and no, no questions. When Detective Harville said, can you please go to MUSC? I, he didn't even have to ask me. Jane endured the invasive yet necessary exam to pursue criminal charges against her attacker. And she was fortunate to have access to a nearby hospital like MUSC. And just swab down here. Where a team of experienced nurses could collect the critical evidence left behind. But not every hospital in South Carolina has this resource, which could keep some sexual assault survivors from reporting their rapes. Through my investigation, I found there are only about 122 forensic nurse examiners or sexual assault nurse examiners working across more than 65 hospitals in the state. And some of them work on regional teams that cover several hospitals at a time. Advocates say these numbers show more needs to be done to close this gap in care. You want to have somebody that is specially trained or you know, can take that trauma-informed approach uh, that knows what they're doing or at least has some experience and not just reading the instructions out of the box. Amanda uh, Brown is the state's forensic nurse examiner program coordinator. She believes more state oversight could increase the number of SANEs in South Carolina and help survivors seek justice against their attackers. You can only have one shot, you know, because that once that evidence is gone, it's gone. I found the Medical University of South Carolina has more resources than most. 22 SANEs, 12 for adult patients, 10 with special training for children, and two more in training. We have a great team that we work with at MUSC, but to get access to them, you have to drive to MUSC. Um, and for someone who's in a rural area or rural Dorchester County, rural Berkeley County, that may be a deterrent um, to take that trek for them. Last year, the Palmetto State became just the third in the country to survey healthcare systems, law enforcement, and advocates about how they handle sexual assaults. But many hospitals failed to answer. It would be ideal that you know we would be able to have hospitals, they would know hey, when I go there, I'm gonna be able to get an exam done and not be turned away because you're already vulnerable, you're already scared, and you're, here you are having to go into the ER and tell your story. And it, you know, it can be traumatizing. You don't want to re-traumatize them. From the state house, lawmakers have pushed for years for better laws to track rape kits and even address a backlog of untested kits. But for most survivors, the reforms don't go far enough. So many people are getting away with rape because they don't have the facilities and the resources. Jane's attacker pleaded guilty to third degree criminal sexual conduct and she believes the evidence in her rape kit was the key to a conviction. But even still, her attacker, Brandon Rickborn, did not serve jail time. He was given a suspended sentence, probation, and placed on the sex offender registry. Jane says the conviction did little to bring her closure, but it was more justice than what the woman who wrote to her received. 
but I don't regret for a minute that I had to go through all that and step forward and put myself through all of that uncomfortable, painful process. And I am not a victim. I am now a survivor. For Live 5 Investigates, I'm Caitlin Stansel. Our investigation led to the creation of a database you can use to see where these specifically trained nurses and doctors, just where they're located. To check out that resource, head to live5news.com and find this story under the Investigates tab.